you heard about restoration hardware? If you haven't, it's a high-end furniture maker that makes beautiful but very expensive furniture. So for a new challenge, I thought to myself, could I make a restoration hardware dining room table on a budget and save a bunch of money? What's up guys, my name is Jason and this is Learn, Build, Repeat. A couple of months ago, I was looking through the restoration hardware website and I found this beautiful open rectangular dining room table. It was listed at $3,060 and being an amateur weekend woodworker, I thought to myself, I could probably build this for a lot cheaper. And so I built this, a restoration hardware inspired dining room table that seats up to six people. This is based on the open rectangular table I saw on restoration hardware and everything in this table cost me about $200 to build, saving me about $2,800 total. Everything I got from this table, I either got from a big box store or from amazon.com because I really wanted this table to be accessible and budget friendly for everyone. I didn't want to go with expensive woods that would easily put this out of the price target of many people, including myself. So to get started on this build, I went to Lowe's and made a very sketchy trip with my Tesla where I somehow managed to pack in 13 two by sixes by eight foot boards in the back of it. I wouldn't recommend this, but if you have to do it, you gotta do it. And that was all the lumber I needed to build this table. So in the rest of this video, I'm gonna show you what I did to turn this raw lumber into this beautiful table. So let's get to it. I have 12 two by sixes uh, that are eight feet long. I think I only need 10 of them, but I grabbed two extra ones just to be sure. And you know, if I make any mistakes, which probably gonna happen, that is a few extra ones. So everything's gonna be based on this. It's all fur and it's all dimensional lumber from a big box store. I need to start planing it down a little bit and jointing it. First thing I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna run that through my jointer and then through my planer. I'm not gonna go all the way with it, but just take a little bit off and then finish the rest up in a couple days. So let's get to it. day now and all the wood has been sitting overnight. The milling isn't quite done but I'm gonna leave it for now and move on to the next step which is cutting everything down to length. So I'm cutting the pieces for the top of the table now. They're supposed to be 72 inches long but I know I'm gonna trim a little bit on both ends later on. So I'm gonna make them an inch. You know what? I'm gonna make them two inches longer than necessary and then trim them down later. These will be cut down a little bit later to the exact length with my truck saw. All right, that's one down. I need to finish the other ones. Eight for the top and then three more for the sides. Let's get to it. Okay, so I've milled down these boards to approximately where I want them to be and I'm about to actually do the glue up, but I can't quite do it yet because the boards aren't quite uh, fitting together quite right. So if you look, you see like a little gap here, a little gap here, and it kind of runs all the way down. A little gap there, a little gap there. So we're gonna need to run the edges through the jointer again in order to fix this. And the way you do this is with the in and out method. So essentially what you do is you go down the line of your boards and you, on all the seams, this seam and this seam, this is the only two that you need to join it again, is you put in and out on each of, the, each of the seams alternating. So when you join this board, you only have to join it on one side, you join it with this face right here against the fence. And then when you join this board with the O, you join this face away from the fence. So I'm gonna do that now and we'll see how it fits afterwards. I just got my last board, actually last two boards, because I also grab a common board that's three quarter inch thick. But here's a good reminder to always check your board for any kind of metal that's gonna mess everything up. There's a staple right there. So yeah, just make sure you pull those out. All right, I'm gonna use my table saw sled to cut down to the final length because this thing is dead true. And I know that miter saw is just a little bit off. So these two boards are gonna be cut down to 35. And that one, ah, we'll figure that one out in a moment. So first I'm just gonna cut off the factory side.
Okay, we're gonna have to cut six pieces for this leg right here, the 25 and eighth. All right, there's all the pieces for the legs. Next step is I'm gonna mill them again, and then I'm gonna do that in and out method for joining the sides in preparation for the glue up. Here are the legs, three here, three here. Uh, now we gotta do the in out method. So as before, in, out, in, out, and in, out. All right. Okay, now I just use the impact wrench with like a universal socket on it just to squeeze everything down. I should note that the clamps, like these guys right here, let me show you. These guys here, they're not fully tightened. I, Cause I, won't, I don't want to tighten them so much that when I, you know, torque these down, it can't kind of level itself out. So I just tighten these down a little bit and then I'm going to tighten these down quite a bit and then I'll tighten the rest of these down. So let's get to it. I might need to go a little bit more. Ah, I think what I'm gonna do, I could use dowels, but what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna glue it. I'm gonna kind of tack it with my brad nailer and then that'll hold it in place long enough for me to get some screws in there. But first things first, I, I want to make sure that no glue gets out of this little area here. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to line it up where it's going to be and throw some tape down. Otherwise it would be very hard, very hard to uh, sand that. All right, I just finished attaching everything, gave everything a sand. Um, everything's smooth now. There's no weird lines anymore, thank God. Except for that weird line, but we're just gonna ignore that. Um, so next step is we're gonna finish attaching this to the base. So, 
Um, here's the base. Actually, I already finished the bottom of it. Um, so you can see that's the color it's gonna be. And I put a coat of polyurethane on it so it's sealed. I wanted to do that because then it's done. I don't need to flip it over later. So let's actually attach these two somehow. All right, there's the base. Ah, oh, it looks good. Uh, let's just double check it square one last time. Yep. Oh, this one's off a little bit. Oh, no. Okay. Just a little bit off. Damn. Well, I don't think it's noticeable. It looks almost perfect, but yeah, a little bit off. But anyway, can't do anything about it now. It's already dry. So the next step is I need to finish the top. Top's just sitting over there. So I gotta lift it back up here and then I gotta put in the uh, tabletop stiffener things. And then we assemble everything. Oh, you know what? One last thing I need to do. I need to put pocket holes. I'm gonna be using pocket holes to attach the top. I was thinking about using dowels, but then I would need to lift that by myself and position it correctly at, this, at one time to get, to prevent glue from going everywhere, uh, which I don't wanna do. So I'm gonna use, So in order to make sure that the wood can expand or contract, I need to make sure that these kind of, these holes are a little bit wider so that there's a little bit of play in there. All this wood that's gonna be used in this table, all the grain is in the same direction, so it should all expand and contract together, except for these guys. So I'm gonna drill these out, and then when I screw it, I'll use like a, like a washer to and you know, actually give it some play and actually attach it. So I'm gonna drill these out and then we'll attach it. All right, I've got all the tabletop stiffeners in, AKA T-Track, but I'm using extra, so hopefully it keeps it stiff enough. Uh, let's flip it over and finish on the side. All right, guys, it's next day, and I did make a big mistake with the uh, tabletop stiffeners, or more precisely, trying to use T-Track as a tabletop stiffener. It really didn't work and it actually just bowed. And I'm trying to clamp it back so it's flat, but if I take these off, yeah, it pops up a little bit. It actually kind of worked to flatten it, but I'm just gonna redo the, uh, the stiffeners. I, uh, so I went to Home Depot and actually was able to find some seed chow. This stuff is way more rigid than the, the, that aluminum T-Track. That was just, that was a stupid idea. I should have done that. Uh, And to do the assembly, I have these pocket holes that I got with my Craig uh, kit. So let's uh, use a few of them. So I set my torque to four, and I find that works pretty well. So there it is, it's all assembled. Um, before I flip it over though, I'm gonna just finish this side. You know, so I don't need to reflip it over or paint, sorry, or stain upside down, super annoying. So I'm gonna put a coat of black stain and then some polyurethane on it. And we'll flip it over and we'll finish it. Okay, the table's almost finished. The last thing I have to do is stain and finish it. I've already stained the bottom just to make it easier for me as I was going throughout this process. And now the last thing to do is to finish the top. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use black stain on this. The reason why I chose black stain is because it has like that modern kind of chic look to it that I think would look so good in a lot of people's houses. And it helps hide some of the imperfections when dealing with this low quality lumber that you get from the big box stores. So 
I'm gonna use a black stain on everything and it should look pretty good when it's finally done. I've just completed the wet sand. I just completed the final sanding after spraying it with water. That helps raise the grain so that you can knock it down with a sander on your final pass. I sand it up to 120 grit, um, which I think is fine for this type of wood, soft wood, pine, you know. You don't need to go much higher than that. So let's finish this and we'll finally take some beauty shots. Okay, it actually looks so good. So much better than I thought. You can actually still see the grain. While it is a very dark stain, obviously it's black, and it kind of looks like it's burnt almost, but without actually having to burn it. So it looks actually really nice. And uh, it's not fully dry yet, and there's no top coat on it. So I'm gonna wait for it to dry. And then for the polyurethane I'm gonna put on it, I'm gonna use this stuff right here. This, if you can see that. This general finishes uh, top coat. Uh, it's a high performance satin, whatever that means. I mean, I know what satin means, but high performance, I have no idea. Uh, I also use this stain when I was staying. General finishes, water-based, wood stain, black. So if you guys wanna do that, I'll have links to all this stuff in the description. And uh, I think for the uh, top coat, what I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna use my sprayer because I'm just gonna spray the whole thing. And if you guys wanna know kind of like a little hack, Get these furniture dollies and then you can use them in your shop for you know when you're building stuff because they make a great little movable platform. And especially if you have a small two car garage like I do for building all this stuff. Yeah, it's uh, pretty cramped in here. Like that's my workspace, <laughs> that's pretty much it. And then all this is kind of used for building stuff. So, all right, uh, enough talking, let's get finishing. So I usually wait about 24 hours for the first coat to cure and harden, and then I'm gonna go back and sand it with 400 grit sandpaper. This will just knock down all those raised fibers that happen because of the water-based stain, and this will make the next coat go on a lot better and a lot smoother. I'll do this a few times to make sure that everything is super smooth, and I build up enough layers to actually protect the tabletop. So I'm gonna sand it, and then we're gonna put another layer on it. So I just gave it another coat of the satin polyurethane and sanded it down, but I realized it was way too shiny, didn't really like it. So I got this flat, high performance uh, polyurethane from General Finishes. So I'm gonna try this on it, the tabletop to see if it looks any better as a flat. So we'll see how it goes. Okay, and the table's all finished right now. I uh, just put the last coat of that flat polyurethane on and it looks fantastic. I love the flat, I love the black. This table looks way better than I ever thought it would. I did make a few mistakes in this table. For example, when it's sanding, some of the wood grain is a little bit softer than other parts of the wood grain. So it's not completely flat, but it is a natural table, so I'm not too worried about it. In the future, I might need to get like a wide belt sander, or maybe I need to like get a harder like sanding disc for my Festool sander, because I feel like it was a little bit too soft, so I went into the dips a little bit more. But overall, honestly, I think it looks pretty good. And yeah, I'm definitely loving the flat matte finish. And if you guys like this content and you guys like watching someone build stuff in their garage, please leave a like and consider subscribing. Thank you very much and I'll see you in the next one.